In this part of the chase, Keaton is mixing angled shots with these flat wide shots, and the flat wide shots accentuate the entering and exit of people uh, in this shot, sliding in and out of frame. This is very careful. Stop, hold, and then they leap through the air almost like they're ragdolls being flung. Look at the skid mark left on the sidewalk. Keaton hardly has enough time to stand up and run out of the shot. Now Keaton's switched 90 degrees where he's running from background to foreground. We see the wonderful rule of silent comedy and silent film that if the actors on screen show you they don't hear anything, it doesn't make a sound like, for instance, this train coming out of nowhere. In real life, we would have heard the train, so would have everybody. Let's take a look at this at cranking speed. I, I figure this is probably around 12 frames per second. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's 12 or 14. But notice he has the time here to scurry under the car carefully. And you'll see in the next shot that the driver, before he pulls away, checks. Look, he's gonna, the driver's going to say, Okay, Buster, yeah, all right. And he starts the car, and there's a little lurch there. Pulls up just far enough. Somebody may have cued him. Stop there. Look at the tire. Look at the cops. And they get ready. The sound of the motor cues them to leap in the air. Boom. There's much more weight to their bodies here now. And look uh, at Buster. You see, he, he looks like he's hurt himself. Look at this. He's grabbing the side of his neck. And you can see uh, the, that he may have actually hurt himself or, or not, but it's certainly registering here. And now look at this and how long this takes for Buster to get from the background to the foreground. But uh, cranking this much slower uh, speeds the whole thing up. And you don't notice it here. Buster's slowing, slowing, slowing. And there's that universal sign, if I take off my jacket, then there's going to be a fight. And this is a little uh, faster because we're closer. Again, the cops couldn't possibly have known that train was there because it was out of camera range and nobody heard it. It's one of the brilliant rules of that universe that, 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 that uh, is essential. Let's look at that again. Now at projected speed, again, he sort of zips through and he slides quickly under the car. Again... We saw uh, the way it was shot. He took his time, but that was being cranked much, much uh, slower. And the economy of the pauses here makes that very clear. And again, you don't see him holding the side of his head. He just has to hop up, look out, see the cops, and zip out of the frame. And just look how quickly Buster gets from the background to the foreground of the shot. We just see him approach the camera, take off his coat, get ready for a fight, and then out of nowhere the train comes in and slides into the shot. That same angle. On to the next bit. Now this is a sequence uh, that's a little bit more slow and sedentary, breaking up all the running, uh, helping the whole sequence build nicely. And there's Eddie Klein making his regular cameo, as he often does in, a, in, in the short films. Now here is a great example of a sequence when there's dialogue, but we don't really need to know what it is, and we can't quite make it out, but we can tell what it is by Buster's facial expressions and gestures, and we make it up for ourselves. There's clearly things that Buster is saying, but it's not essential that we know what he's saying. We can tell that he's upset, uh, and he thinks that Eddie is, is holding on to him, but he's not. And again, uh, right after Eddie walks off, Buster should have heard him, but because he doesn't indicate to us that he's heard it, it does not make a sound. Very simple, taking his time before we go on to the next running sequence. Let's take a look at that at cranking speed. I figured this is probably shot around 16 frames per second, being done primarily in medium shots. We just need to see the information that he's put the coat on uh, over the pole. They look at each other. Pauses, pauses, pauses in between each bit of business. So it reads, I've zoomed in here. If you enlarge this, on look at this full screen, and if you can read lips, maybe you can help figure out what he's saying. It's hard to really tell. He said, I don't really appreciate this. It's not my fault. And again, he should hear Eddie walking away, but because it's a silent movie, he doesn't necessarily hear it. He hears what he tells us he's hearing. Look at the people in the background watching Buster. Very simple, calm stillness before we get back to the next running 
uh, uh, gags with people running and chasing. Again, he stops, looks, looks at the, looks at the cop, looks at the pole, looks at his coat, picks it up. Wait, put it on. Wait, turn around, and then he walks off. Let's take a look at it at projected speed. A quick zoop, like it's one smooth movement. Eddie Klein enters. Well, these two guys are on screen. Who's directing this picture? And again, we, we kind of got a, 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 an idea of what Buster was saying to Eddie the whole time when we looked at it uh, in real-time speed. But again, we don't really need to know what it is. We're just watching his face. We just see that he's uh, for toots, as they say. Very simple. Stillness, people standing, w standing and waiting, sort of as a pause uh, between the the previous running around sequence and the next chase sequence, which is coming up in the next segment.